Hi there. I'm Gray Marshall, and I'm a film and television colorist in Los Angeles. Today, I'll share how I use Baselight to do Photoshop-style dodge and burn, similar to the famous techniques used in the darkroom by still photographers. Before I was a colorist, I was a visual effects artist and supervisor, so I'm really into these sorts of techniques. I take a lot of inspiration from Photoshop and its community, and with Baselight, I finally have a color correction tool that lets me explore these areas in depth. To start with, we have a red image here, just a stock photo they have. Uh, I'm working in Filmlight T-Log E-Gamut space. You can work in whatever works for you. I'll show you a few tricks about things to change, but it should all work pretty much the same. Here, I just have a basic uh, uh, layer, just a, a base grade. And what I'd like to do is to probably brighten up the sunlight across these buildings. I don't want to just brighten everything because I really like where the sky is. I like a lot of the tonal range. I just want to give more sunlight, maybe darken some of this down, darken the foreground down a bit, and a few other things. So here's how I'm going to do that. First of all, I'll go ahead and add a new layer. It doesn't really matter what kind of layer you add. Now, this is going to be fun because I really like this. Not too people have played in this too deeply, and that is the blend control panel. Here you can do a lot of things, but for today, we're just going to go ahead and set it to overlay, which is what you need for this technique to work. I'm going to go ahead and put it at 100%. Don't worry about the image getting darkened. It's just blending with itself. We're going to replace it with something else right now. What we're going to replace it with is just a blank gray, a neutral gray. And that all starts here with the blend width in this section of the control panel. Right now, it's saying blend the incoming layer on both sides with itself, color correcting only one of them, and then blending it. Here, we're going to change it. This looks a lot like the reference uh, strip information in a keyer, but it's a little different because it's a blend reference rather than a keying reference. Again, you can go back to your layer zero, any other layer, or bring another layer in. This is a really great way to bring in grain, noise, uh, flares, any of that stuff. So let's go ahead and choose that. And what happened when it did that was it added a blend source down here in my strips. And I think I can probably make that bigger. There we go. A blend source down here. And let's open that up. And it again, looks just like a reference strip. Here's where you can change it to an incoming sequence strip to again, bring in that flare or whatever you want. We're going to choose blank strip and I'm going to set it at 50%. Point 0.5. Change it just for the sake of a discussion to say gray, no pun intended. And let's go back to our... <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and change this to just say, call it label DMB, just for cleanliness. Now on the gray strip, I want to go ahead and add a new layer. And I'm going to change its type to a paint type as the first one. And we're going to name this also paint, just so we can get it straight. So that's the output of our stack. Cursor 2 points to the paint layer right now, showing us exactly what it's doing. Let's keep on the stack for the moment. You can see what's going on. But we'll use the paint. And... I'm going to change this to a soft color brush. This I find is a good starting point. You could use a color brush and make it fairly soft, but I find soft color brush tends to work for this sort of work anyway. And as you'll see later, we're going to blur it out anyway, so you don't need to be that precise with it. Working with this, I found that this really works best with just an opacity of two. Just a little bit goes a long, long way. Now, this is very important. Selecting the color here. We're only going to use two colors, white and black, for this painting. We're going to build them up in density. That's why we have our opacity low. But the color, we want to make sure that our color type here is actually set to the same color that we're working in, the same color space. So I'm in Filmlight T-Log. I'm going to choose this and put it to Filmlight T-Log. And then make sure that the white is boosted up 100%. So I've got a pure white in uh T log E gamut. And whatever color space you're working on here, be airy, be you know, Rec 709, make sure that's set right. You only need to do that at the top of your session. Everything will work fine from there. So I now have a soft brush, 
full width, which I can change depending, uh, only a 2% opacity. Let's start painting on here. You can see it coming on in. I'm going to be a little bold so it comes across on the video well. You can see it probably a little more than I would do in real life. Just painting this, and I'm being not too careful with it because I changed the size a little bit. I just want to make sure that these buildings all get a good amount of light on the front in these areas that have a little bit of light already. And there we go. Uh, next, I'd like to go ahead and keep all this the same. And I'm going to paint some black in. Just change this down to black. And I find the opacity works better up around 15 for painting with blacks. And I'm going to knock down all of this just coming across here and slowing all that down. Now I can hear you saying, well, what's really going on? Well, if we look at the paint layer using cursor two, you can see I've got white in the top building, I've painted black down below. And once it's all combined softly, when it's all combined with the overlay, we get a result before and after. I think I want to paint some more black down here along the edges. Be careful of the edges and all that. Now, it does look like I leaked a little bit of white over here. So I could go ahead and take an eraser, probably make it smaller, and paint some of that out. Bring the eraser back. And I think I'd also like to paint that ship down here a bit brighter. Now, this going back and forth with the brush is a little difficult. So I've already made, I've saved these brushes into two types, light and dark. So I just need to come ahead and load the light brush. And I've got everything I need now to go ahead and maybe just paint this up a little bit. Again, looking at our cursor two, we've got a little bit of brightness there. And back to cursor one. And I think I'll go ahead and choose the dark brush again, make it smaller, and paint the side of this building a bit more. Bring it down, paint the side of this building a bit more. And some of this detail up here, which I really don't want to see that much. All right, looking pretty good. Again, switching cursors and back and before and after. Just as a finishing touch, I'm going to go ahead and blur my paintbrush layer a bit like this, give it a little more room. And that tends to settle it in a bit more. And then finally, working with your original layer where the overlay is, you can mix this back and forth and just find the balance that really works for you. Now, you're going to say this is a static shot. Don't really need to do that much here. Works pretty well. Bird flies through. But what do you do if you're moving? Well, you can go ahead with this shot. I'll show you what I did in a second. You can see how she's moving around. And go to our output layer. And you can see that she's definitely moving around, turning her head. So what I did here, I'll show you with the output cursor, is I did a bit of a grade on her face bit of white and black. Let me go ahead and actually just turn off the blur a bit. It's very subtle. But I tracked that to her face using a perspective warp. And now I've got color on her face. It would be good if I actually blurred it back up because that's not looking too nice. But something like that. And then before I did anything, and after. So you can track it, you can track the paint, and it'll work just fine. Anyway, that's it for now. 
Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I think most of you know how to reach me or you can get me at Gray Matter Post. And I look forward to uh, talking to you next time. Take care.